learn today. So um, I'll introduce, my name is Don Saucer. I always forget to introduce myself, but in case you haven't met me before, my name is Don Saucer. I'm the faculty associate director of the Teaching and Learning Center. And we have a professional development series that meets every Wednesday at noon. Um, so today we have Kathy Brockway from a Polytechnic campus, uh, campus talking to us about enthusiasm, which is gonna be an amazing message. As I told her whether she likes it or not, she and I are now best friends uh, because we speak the same language and I'm really excited to hear her thoughts on this. Next week, we have a teaching chat just to put that on your radar. That's a day where you can come in and bring questions and talk about issues and crowdsource all of the solutions to all of the things that you're facing this semester, teaching in a very interesting semester. Next week will be our first week kind of back to face-to-face -face type operations in our classes. So I'll be really interested to hear how that transition has gone. But you did not come here to listen to me. You came here to listen to Kathy Brockway and I'm very excited to turn this over to her because I am so excited to hear about enthusiasm. Thank you so uh, much, th Kathy. Thank you, Don. Let me take a moment, get my screen up. Tucker. Can you see a big circle on your screen? Yes, I can. All right, fabulous. All right, well, thank you so much for having me here today. Um, yeah, one of my favorite topics, enthusiasm and teaching. Um, I, I thought we'd start with what it is and more importantly, what it is not. So in my opinion, enthusiasm and teaching is not being a cheerleader 24 seven. It might take that form every once in a while, but that's not really the essence of enthusiasm and teaching. So I gave it some thought and here's why I think we should be cognizant of enthusiasm and teaching and why we should be focused on cultivating it and nourishing it in ourselves and our students. The so what is right here. I, I think we need to teach others with such enthusiasm that they wonder why, right? We wanna grab them and, and make them consider why is that teacher so excited about their particular subject, about this particular class? And I don't mean that it needs to be roaring loud. Um, enthusiasm can be quiet, but again, you have to demonstrate your, your deep connection to your subject matter and make everyone else wonder why. And the important part of that is we're here to create relentlessly curious, lifelong learners. And one big way that we do that is through our enthusiasm in our teaching. Uh, we want to pull them in so they go out and do the research and study and come back and share it with the rest of the class. So it's all about making them wonder why. To me, that's what enthusiasm in teaching is all about. Though I might cheerlead from time to time. Uh, I wanted to start with a disclaimer. Um, when it comes to enthusiasm and teaching, it's not going to look the same or feel the same for everybody. We come from such different places. We have different subject matters. We have different types of students, different class sizes, different teaching modalities, different teaching styles. And so um, enthusiasm will look very different on Tucker versus Don. Um, and it just, it's a very individual thing, but we all get the job done. Right? Um, and so what I wanna to do today is share a few tools and techniques that I use to create enthusiasm in teaching and in my students. Um, I know they're not gonna fit perfectly for you because again, we come from such different places, but here's my objective, my hope, is by the end of our time together, you're gonna to walk out of that virtual door with swagger, armed with some tools you can take back to your workspace and edit, modify, build on and improve and then use them in your own teaching space. So, so there's my disclaimer. Um, as I was putting this together, I'm like, oh, where to start, where to start? Well, I decided we start at the beginning. We're gonna start with day one of the semester. Um, I, I've, I teach accounting and finance classes and I've, I've taught at Kansas State University. I'm just finishing my 27th year. Um, I was on the Manhattan campus for seven years with the Department of Accounting. And then the last 20, I've been here on the Polytechnic campus. Um, and I don't know about you, but on my first day, I still get nervous and I still get so excited every single semester. Um, I hope that part never, never goes away. And so day one, it's very easy, I think probably for all of us to walk in and show that enthusiasm, right? It's very easy. The hard part is following it up for the next 16 weeks and demonstrating to the students how in love we are with our subject matter, how deeply connected we are to, to that topic. And so 
it's so important that we do share that enthusiasm day one and then set up some sort of a framework, a system that will catch us on those days during the semester when we're just maybe not feeling it. Um, because enthusiasm, you put it out there and it is gonna come back to you when you need it. I intentionally create a type of structure that will do that for me throughout those 16 weeks. So I think you've got to start day one very intentionally, set the expectations like we all do, and then carry it forward using some sort of a structure that works for you. Um, after day one, my students walk out, there's no question. They know I love accounting and finance, and they know I am a relentlessly curious lifelong learner on a journey and that they'll be walking next to me for the next 16 weeks and I'll be walking next to them. So there is no question after that first day. And then it's just a matter of following it up. So I've got, I went, you know, I, I, I tried to consider what I wanted to share, what tools and techniques I wanted to share with you. And I came up with six, right? I probably should have stopped at five, but I think the enthusiasm pushed me over to the sixth item. So I have a, a six item list um, want to share with you. And the first item, to consider as you're as you're trying to think, how can I demonstrate enthusiasm in the classroom? How can I pull those students in? Um, it doesn't have to be fancy. Do something very simple and memorable. And what you'll find oftentimes are these simple and memorable activities or actions can sometimes become a signature for the class, maybe for you. Um, and I have one example of many. Uh, I have one example I wanted to share with you by what I mean with simple but memorable. Okay, um, and I'm gonna need your help with this one. So I teach accounting, as I mentioned, um, I teach an introductory class. And usually during the first week sometime, I share with my students that the word accountant comes from the French language. And then I jokingly ask them if, if they speak French. And typically it's a resounding no, which I um, act very relieved at and, and tell them I don't speak it either, but I'm not gonna let that get in the way of me teaching them a little French. And so that I have them repeat after me. So if you're willing, why don't you unmute and I'm gonna teach you a little French. <clears throat> okay, so here goes. If you're willing, I just need you to repeat after me. Je sais. Je sais. Je sais. Compte. Compte. Okay, let's put it together. Je sais compte. Yes, yes, that's fabulous. Okay, so I do that with my class and then I tell them that you just said I can count. Right? <laughs> Every good accountant needs to be able to say that. And so, um, you know, it takes one or two minutes, but here's what it does for at least for us. Um, it never fails. If I'm maybe a little down, not feeling it, I'll walk into the classroom and someone, one of my students will greet me with the je sais compte. Throughout the semester, I'll walk in and I'll hear it. Um, I'll be walking down the hall. They'll say it to me. I run into them in the community, in their workspace, uh, in a restaurant, and they'll come up to me and say, je sais compte. One day I was walking down the hall in the tech center and I had a, a former, a, a student that had been in my class and he walks up to me and he, he says this, and let me see if I can do it. Savez-vous comment compte? He had taken the time to learn how to ask, do you know how to count? Which I absolutely answered in the affirmative with enthusiasm that I do. Um, and so be thinking of ways that you can demonstrate that enthusiasm and it doesn't have to be fancy and it doesn't have to take a long time. And if you can create some sort of a signature for the group, it's pretty powerful. And again, it comes back to you when you need it. So that was one example of a simple but memorable activity that can show a little enthusiasm. Um, all right, item two out of my six item list, do something to celebrate. And you can always find something to, to celebrate um, in, your, in your class. And I have an example, I have lots, but I have an example, um, November 10th, all right? Seems like a pretty ordinary day, mm, not to me. November 10th, this is national, Accountants Day, National Accountants Day. We all should celebrate this. And so I kind of make a deal of it in my class. Um, I usually, when, when we are face-to-face, -face, you know, I'll, I'll bring some, some food. Uh, Dylan's Bakery makes a mean debit and credit cookie, right? And then we do learning activities related to the, the topic at hand. So maybe we'll play a game of Jeopardy. 
But the cool thing about this particular celebration is I take the opportunity to, to discuss and teach about the history of accounting. For example, we celebrate Accountants Day on November 10th because the father of accounting, Luca Pacioli, supposedly published his book on accounting on November 10th of 1494. And so I use it as an opportunity to teach about the history, but we have fun while we do it. And again, this is something they talk about later on. And so celebrate, think of, think of things that would fit well into your subject area and, and make, it, make it fun, make it a celebration. I wanted you to notice that the debits are on the left and the credits are on the right as they should be. All is good. All right, item three of my six item list. Do something fun to share the unique or the quirky about your industry or your subject area. Just for an example, I would bet every industry has jargon that maybe you could share with the students here and there that makes it a little fun. And again, it kind of grabs their attention. And I can show you an example of what I mean. Um, I teach an introductory finance class. And so in my introductory finance class, we do from time to time uh, study the odd and inspired jargon in this particular industry. And I wanted to share with you what I mean by that. So here's a list of some, definitely not all, um, some, some odd financial jargon that's out there from A to Z. The students have so much fun with this. I send them out with the words, they have to go figure out what, what, the, what it means, and then they have to come back and tell me how it fits into what we study in the classroom. And I, I'm very excited right here in the top portion. We've only been in school, what, a week and a half of this semester, and we've already hit this particular term, diamond hands, because we've been talking about GameStop and retail investors and all those business headlines that are out there right now. And if you've been reading, you might have seen this term diamond hands. And so in my class, we talked about it means we have an investor that, that has a position in the stock market and they are willing to hang on until the bitter end, regardless of risk. And it even has the emoji. And so it's just fun when you can tie this financial jargon to the headlines and it makes it a little more real. So things like this, I find get their attention, again, get them excited. It completely ties into what, what you're studying. And, uh, and then once we've run through this list of, of topics, I always kind of joke with them that the, if they can learn these topics, it adds to their cool factor. And I always challenge them to use it in conversation. You know, use one or two of these terms with your friends or family, but then you have to come back and tell the class about the conversation. So I, I try to have them take this outside the classroom and use it, see what happens. So that's another way you can show enthusiasm for your subject matter is share the, the odd or the quirky that might be a part of it. Item four on my list of six, grab their attention, do something unexpected. I have lots of examples, but um, thought I'd share this one with you. In one of my classes, we always study personal income tax. So we study the form 1040 from beginning to end. Uh, we get our calculators out and we, we run the numbers. And so I, I in the spring semesters, I always try to make it end about April 15th this module. So when the module ends, I, I tell them the next class period, we're having a quiz, bring your calculator, bring your pencil, we're going to have a quiz over income tax in the form 1040. And so they go home and I'm sure they study and they they come back to class and then I throw something unexpected at them. What I do is I hand each of them a sheet of paper that has a component from the form 1040. So everyone is holding a different item. So here's our here's some examples of what they might get handed, but everyone has a different item. And then I tell them, okay, this is a group quiz. Today, you've got to take your component from the Form 1040 and you've got to line up in the proper order from start to finish. And so we call it our human Form 1040. And it they have a great time at it and it, it shows that they know the tax. They know that form. Um, so they have to get the pluses, the minuses, the equals in the right spot. And we, we make it very active that day. Um, I did this online last semester. We went into break, breakout rooms. It wasn't as physically right moving, but still they, they interacted with, the, with their peers and they were able to prove that they knew that form 1040. And when we are face-to-face, -face, I do like to bring food again. 
the thing with me. Um, one of a uh, professor Jenneru here on our campus, his wife has a bakery. And so she made me form 1040 cookies. They were awesome. Um, and just to show a small impact, this is small, but it means so much to me. Uh, we have a graduate, he graduated in 2013. And um, I always share with the students how I am an April 15th filer. I always wait till the last. And this particular graduate, he'll, I can count on him texting me every year in April just to check on me to make sure that I get my taxes filed. This year was a little different, right? Because the, the deadline got moved to July. Um, but I, I, I keep this because it inspires me, right? I, I, I hope that I've inspired here to, him to continue learning about things like income tax. And he thinks about um, the, the class on, on that week. So it's just fun to get that, that response. Um, all right, item five out of my six item list, personalize it, right? Do something personal. So one example, um, in my finance class, once a month during the semester, we'll have what we call Intrigue Friday. And what that means is I have my students come up with intriguing questions they have about finance that we haven't answered in the class yet, right? So they submit these intriguing finance questions to me and then they help me research the answers to them. And then on that Friday, once a month, we present the answers. And I always shout out to them and they help me present what we found on their particular question. And here are just a, a few examples, but it's important to put their name to it, let them be a big part of it. Um, and it, it almost becomes a competition with them to come up with the most intriguing finance question. Um, and so, that's one way you could personalize it is let them drive a particular class, right? Come up with these intriguing questions and then help you answer them. All right, so I'm a big believer in personalizing the experience and in, in, in using personalizing to show them the enthusiasm and cultivate it, them, it, cultivate it in your students. So I'm stuck on item number five. Here's another example of how you might personalize um, the situation. I do lots of worksheets in accounting and finance, lots of worksheets, and I always personalize the examples with student names, right? So it'll be, we'll be talking about a particular company, we add their name, and boy, they perk up when it's time for their particular problem, and I always have them help me with it as we work on it in class. That's one way you can personalize something, um, and I'm sure many of you do this as well. On exams, I have a be the finance prof problem, meaning they have to write a problem based on a topic I've given them and they have to show me the solution to their problem. Again, I'm sure you all do this as well, but it's a great way to let them personalize um, the situation, personalize that exam. And so I pulled a couple of be the finance prof problems that I thought were pretty cool um, in their responses. So here's one, this is a be the finance prof problem it was a very simple inflation problem I asked them to create and solve. Um, but what I loved about this one, his answer is in bold. Um, the company name was Kathy's Highest Peaks Hiking Guide Services. So here's the story. Um, this was from a purely online class. And in my introduction, I shared with the students that I am a high pointer. My goal is to hike or climb to the highest point in each state. Um, so far, I've knocked out 15, by the way. Um, but I shared it with them in the introduction on the final, he comes back and names it after a hobby of mine. And I just thought that was very cool, very telling. He remembered that I'd shared that and, and he used it and, and personalized the example, just like I had done with the class. Um, here's a, a, another one I picked, another be the finance prof um, problem. And it was a capital budgeting problem. So um, it was on the final exam and this particular exam was holiday themed. And so I kind of challenged them in their problem to keep the holiday theme. This student did not disappoint. Um, so his company was the Grinch company and he was gonna look to acquire a new wood chipper to get rid of the pesky trees and gifts. Um, so he gave the appropriate numbers, he solved it perfectly and he answered it perfectly. They should not acquire this wood chipper because it earned less than the 10% needed. But then he played with it and I just, Again, it, it allowed him to personalize this, this exam. It said the Grinch will likely make the investment anyway because no cost is too high for equipment that will assist in the Christmas ruining mission. And so that was his creation. It showed that he absolutely understood the process and he was able to personalize his exam. 
oh, did I say I'm stuck on number five? Again, I'm stuck on number five. How can we personalize uh, the experience to show that enthusiasm? I'm sure many of you um, use something similar to this, especially if you have a larger class size. There are so many apps out there um, that simulate pulling a name out of a hat. Um, so this is one I've used. I just wanted to show you an example of, of what the screens look like. So it allows you to enter your, your class roster. And then I have it on my iPad. It looks like that when I open it. And then I just tap the screen when I'm ready and it pulls up a student's name. So in a larger class, these are awesome because it allows everyone to play, even those that might be a little quiet, it allows them to, to get involved. So um, I think I saw Ruth Mertz out there in the crowd. She offered up in a meeting we just had recently here at the Polytechnic campus. Ruth, uh, correct me if I'm saying it wrong, but I think it was wheelofnames.com, if that's more your of your liking to have on your laptop or your PC. And it even, I think she said applauded after we picked a name. So lots of things out there that you can play with, again, to personalize the, the situation. And man, when the students know, you know their name and you know where they're at, they, they just act differently. They show up differently. Okay, I'm done with number five. So the last item on my list, number six, do something beyond the classroom. Um, enthusiasm in teaching, again, like I opened with, it's all about creating relentlessly curious, lifelong learners. That is my goal. That is what I do. As a side note, I teach accounting and finance, right? So I want them to, to ask the why. I want them to be investigating. And so much of that goes on outside the classroom door. Um, and again, so many things that all of us can share that we do to share our enthusiasm beyond the classroom. I had a fun example I wanted to, to throw out probably three years ago, I bet it's been, we had a student who would leave inspiring messages on the bathroom mirror and she would do it anonymously, though I figured out who she was. And when she graduated, I really missed that, right? I, I missed that little burst of inspiration that I got when I read her note. And so a couple semesters ago, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna try it. And so I would go into the bathroom and I would leave a note just randomly every few days. I'd I'd throw something out. You know, it was mid semester. You want to promote that we got to keep moving forward. We got to keep that enthusiasm going. What I did notice that my my closet's filled with green. I need to I need to branch out. But anyway, I would leave notes on the bathroom mirror. And here's the end of the story. It was the best ever. So I walked in one day to put a note on the mirror and look what I found. Um, somebody else had taken it upon themselves to grab a sticky note and do the same thing that I've been doing. And so I, I let it go. I decided someone else could take it from there because it, it, it had worked. It had done what I wanted it to do. Um, I wanted to, to, you know, inspire, get that positivity out there that we need, that enthusiasm. And so it was just kind of a fun end to the story. And it just reminded me that that's why enthusiasm is the ultimate renewable. You put it out there and it's going to come back to you. And what I've found over my 27 years is it happens oftentimes when you need it the most. It'll just take you by surprise. Again, I'll, I'll, someone will say, je sais comme tu, and I, I'll be back into wanting to teach a little accounting that day. And so um, when you're not feeling it, hmm, do everything you can to throw it out there because it's going to come back to you when you need it the most. So those are my six items that I wanted to share. I was thinking, let me check time. I was hoping we could go into some breakout rooms and you could share with a smaller group a few things that you do to generate that enthusiasm, whether it's uh, quiet or loud, um, or maybe what your most favorite teacher did to display enthusiasm to you. You know, anything in, in that area, I'd love for you to discuss in small groups just for a few minutes, and then we'll call you back to the larger group, and I'd love to hear a few of, of the, the nuggets, the gems. So let's see what we can do here. Mm -hmm. I think we all should be back. Um, I'd love to hear just some highlights of the, the smaller discussions that you had. I popped into a few of the rooms. Um, I was wondering, in room five, Jesse, Jesse Piper, um, I popped into that room. 
Jesse, would you be willing to share a little bit of your discussion or maybe call on one of your peers if you'd, if you'd rather? Sure, I can. <laughs> um, none of us really had super concrete ideas, um, but we talked about some stuff that I found interesting. Um, one being that subject matter matters. So like you're an accountant and I'll be honest when you were talking about the 1040s I was like man that sounds terribly boring <laughs> but uh you were showing enthusiasm so I was like well maybe I could do that and it would be fun um I teach human development so I feel like that's super exciting to me but I'm sure some people maybe come in the classroom and don't find it exciting um so subject matters, people in your classes matter, you know, like where they're coming from and what their interests are. Um, yeah, but we, we basically agreed that you can be enthusiastic about anything um, and active learning really helps, so. Oh, absolutely. Active learning is so important, I think, to, to, to just spur that enthusiasm in everyone. So yeah, thank you for sharing, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Um, I popped into room four. Stuart, where are you? Stuart and I were best friends. There's Stuart. Okay, Stuart teaches in the psychology area, right? That's correct. Yeah. So Stuart, would you be willing to share anything that y'all discussed, you know, something that maybe spoke to you? Well, I'll share something that I, I talked about. I don't want to misrepresent what others were sharing, but um, mm -hmm. as an example of getting students to, you know, personalize things, I, I talked about how in my upper level psych, uh, personality psychology class, uh, one of the first things we cover is research methods because they need they need that as a foundation before they start to learn the rest. Um, and you know, the first couple times I taught that course, I would just tell them how we did things in personality. And then I thought, well, you know, they're not. I didn't expect them to be as enthusiastic about this section. But I'm like, well, how do I get them more enthusiastic? And I came up with the idea of personalizing it. And I, I said, well, we're going to create a personality test. Right. And I had them create a personality test over some fun construct that, that a personality test doesn't exist for. So they came up with ideas like how extra are you? How much of a mom friend are you? How basic are you? These kinds of things. And they wrote the items for the test. Um, we then collected data and I showed them. I didn't just tell them how we find out whether uh, a new test has uh, properties of reliability and validity. We did that. We actually, uh, you know, analyzed our new really created personality test and now that now they're getting it it's like okay now i understand what a factor analysis is doing and now i understand why we have to you know also check for validity and things like that so i, I think that has really increased the engagement uh, and enthusiasm Stuart, that is such a cool example so you let them drive it yeah. the creativity that's so cool ah. all right um I popped into room six and Ruth, would you be willing to share a little bit about your team's discussion? Uh, sure, we talked uh, quite a bit about that same um, um, kind of offshoot of enthusiasm, which is kind of engagement, getting other, getting the students in, engaged and showing them, you know, that they can do it. And um, one of the people talked about the, the waterfall chat um, and um, which I didn't realize it had a name. Uh, which you could, could do in Canvas or in the Zoom chat where uh, you have everybody respond to a, a prompt, but they wait until everybody's had a chance to write something. And then everyone posts at the same time in the chat so that then they, they don't get intimidated or wait for other people to take the lead and so on. Um, and she said that worked really well. Um, and then um, one of the other people should take over and talk about the animal sounds. Please do. Yes. I have to unmute. <laughs> that was me. So I'm, I'm teaching a behavioral ecology course, which is animal behavior. And so I used to bring in an animal sound at the beginning of the day. And that was how we started class. So the students had to try to identify the animal sound. And so I would have some weird bug and they're like fish, frog, you know. Um, and so I thought that this semester, since we're online, when we have our discussions, I'm going to do the first one and then have try to get them to pick animals and bring animal sounds in and, and quiz everybody on them. 
Eva, that is such a cool activity. I want to come to your class. I <laughs> We'll see how it goes. <laughs> That's awesome. Again, personalizing it, letting them kind of drive it. Uh, they're going to be so much more involved. Ah, I love it. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. Room one. Linda, are you out there? Linda Yarrow? Yes, I'm still here. Um, uh, we, we, we yeah. Um, we talked about some of the same things that have been mentioned. We talked about the benefit of telling um, stories the, for that personal connection, about doing application-based projects like case studies. Um, we talked about connecting with um, your students, you know, before class starts or after class. You know, someone mentioned that you don't have to worry about, you know, getting names wrong now because we look smart that everybody's name is in front of us. So just, you know, chatting with students um, and other than the actual content itself um, can be useful. If anybody else from room one wants to jump in so for some other things that we mentioned, but a lot of it was just looking for ways that we can personalize and connect with the students because then that creates enthusiasm and feedback for us that is very rewarding. I love the comment about the before and after class part. Absolutely. It's so important um, and it does pull them into the subject matter then. They're much more willing to, to play if you if you're paying attention to them before and after that's great i guess one thing that was mentioned by a few people too that i should um throw out there is just some of the words we use that show our enthusiasm for the subject and matter like oh this is so cool or you know isn't that exciting you know isn't or even isn't that bizarre you know just anything that shows that we just find the information fascinating ourselves they need to know that yes oh so that's great example that's so important Awesome. Okay. Um, let's see. Adelaide. I don't know how to say your last name. Adelaide, are you out there? Yes, I'm here. Um, there we you are. Yeah, we decided that Adi was going to talk. So I'll just let her talk. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that our group really uh, grabbed on to the idea of being relentlessly curious. Um, and inspiring that in our students because um, like we talked about, you know, like kind of showing them like what we do, like really in the field. So getting their hands on real equipment that's used for experiments, showing them experiments, um, having them consider what kind of experiments they would do. Um, a lot of times I have my students as part of their preparation homework, you know, come up with one or two questions that they have. Um, and I was saying that just, you know, this semester I'm teaching a course on bilingualism and yesterday in class we were talking about first language acquisition and there's just not a ton of research out there on the progression of bilingual acquisition in childhood. And so we were talking about that. My students had all these questions and I was like, I don't know. That's really, the, I would love to know that. And I think that, you know, admitting that we don't know, we don't have the answers either because I haven't studied that or because it hasn't been studied yet to give them that like, yeah, come on in, join us. Like, let's figure this out. I think that that's a really fun way to get students to just like, oh, like I can be part of this in some way. Oh, I love that idea. Yes, allowing them to, to feel that this could be them. They could get out there and find that answer, do that research. Oh, love it. All right, um, room two, Melissa, are you out there, Melissa? There you are. I am. So I had the pleasure of being with two students who are former students of yours, Kathy. And so that was really fun to hear their perspectives about you. And they were here just because they loved you so much. Um, we talked about a lot of the things that other people have said, but but one thing that, that we talked about that's been brought up a little bit, but um, was considering the audience and considering the subject material when determining what type of enthusiasm to have. So if you have subject matter that's scary or controversial or nerve-wracking that a different type of enthusiasm maybe that quiet enthusiasm you were talking about Kathy is more appropriate or reading your students whether that's a one-on-one -on -one or a whole class if they're really stressed out about something or it's that point in the semester just have a lot going on in their lives coming in and being super bubbly may not be the way to start and so um, being enthusiastic in ways that consider the people that you're with as well as the content that you're discussing seems to be important um, so that was something our group talked about that's great because so you know i said it would be different for everyone but melissa you're spot on it's going to be different every day depending on the topic and and how they're feeling um kind of that 
let's see, I popped into wherever Ruth was at that room and she was talking about doing a temperature check. And Melissa, that's kind of what I think you're getting at is, you know, some days they don't need that. It needs to be more of a quiet enthusiasm, a subdued. Yeah, fabulous. Okay, so I think I made it around to all six rooms. Anyone else wanna throw anything out that, that just hit you in those discussions? Please do so. So while we were talking, Melissa's daughter joined us and she was telling us a little bit about her teacher and just talking about how when teachers are flexible and they're willing to kind of work with students and kind of let students share their own interests if it's relevant to the course material, that can go a long way to, to build up enthusiasm in the classroom. Very cool. Well, Melissa, thank you. Oh my gosh. Welcome to class. That's awesome. Melissa, thank you for sharing that. That is cool to hear from that perspective. Something to remember. Absolutely. We talked about whether you're six or 26 or 56, a lot of those things matter. So Lilla was excited to share what she liked about her teachers. Oh, it's so good to meet you. Awesome. All right. Um, any other last minute, anything you want to throw out? All right, let me pull up my screen, um, get left off. Tucker, can you see my screen? Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, so again, you know, day one, we, we need to set those expectations. Um, we need to work on building that relentless curiosity in everyone around us, peers and students alike, um, and, and have some sort of a framework structure for yourself that will pay back when you need it, that enthusiasm, let it come back to you when you need it. Um, so back to my list of six. Again, I, I just couldn't at six. Um, as, I, as I look at the list, I just think this part of it is important. Um, again, everyone's gonna be different. And like Melissa's group talked about, every day can be different as to what enthusiasm and teaching is gonna look like, what we need. Um, but the important thing is to be intentional about it, to be aware of it, intentional, and just do something. It can be something little, but it can be, make such a huge difference in everybody's experience. So just get in there and, and do something to, to demonstrate that enthusiasm. And what I, I hope you walk away with, you know, one thing that you remember is that I think this is the goal. We, we want to get out there and teach with such enthusiasm that they wonder why. So Dawn, with that, that concludes my message. Um, I'm gonna turn it back to you. So I, I will say that that is an amazing message. I, I, I loved everything that you said. Our, our group was very, like we spent time, like some of the others just talking about all the awesome stuff that you said. You now I have kind of a list of quotes um, that I'm gonna use forward. I'm gonna attribute them to you because they're amazing. And I think this message that we have relentlessly curious lifelong learners on a journey yes. is just such a wonderful way to think about what it is we do and if we realize that this is the classroom we're walking into that this is our audience i don't know how we we can't be enthusiastic you know about that so i just i just love that right away at the beginning of the semester you've had such an inspirational message that that i felt you know reached out to me personally and everyone in my group felt that same way so this was this was amazing. Um, I do want to give people the opportunity to ask you some questions before we do that. I just want to remind everybody our professional development series meets every noon, same Zoom every Wednesday at noon, same Zoom link that you have here. All our events are archived in Canvas. We'd love you to be part of our professional development certificate or a fellowship series as well. Um, so that's all I have to say about that and teaching chat next week. We're kind of a crowdsourced kind of discussion about all those kind of things. But um, Kathy, I wonder maybe if you want to go back to the Brady Bunch view, the gallery view, and then people can ask any questions that they have remaining. But you are fantastic. Thank you so much for contributing your time, energy, and enthusiasm to this to this topic. Absolutely, absolutely. There we go. All right. Any questions? And you can always reach 